I was surprised to learn that Alexander Graham Bell, in 1881, designed and constructed a functioning metal detector. I say surprised because I have designed and constructed some simple metal detectors, like this one. Modern electronics made the task relatively easy. I couldn't imagine how Bell, with the primitive state of electronics in 1881, created a working metal detector. But incredibly, he did. I investigated his approach using this 19th century diagram of his metal detector. The device uses two overlapping coils, a primary and secondary coil. This component, the interrupter, turns current flow off and on at a high frequency, creating a discernible buzz in the telephone receiver. Note the two coils are not connected. Bell called this configuration an induction balance. Here's how this works. I created two coils by winding 30 turns of 25 gauge enameled wire onto an 8 centimeter diameter cup. The completed coil looks like this. I remove the enamel insulation from each lead with sandpaper. Next I created a circuit to produce a tone. This is the equivalent of Bell's interrupter. This tone generator is constructed from a common 555 integrated circuit. You can find instructions for building a circuit like this at hyloroad.com slash bell. Connecting a speaker to the circuit, we can hear the tone. This confirms that the circuit is working. Pulsing current is flowing through the speaker. I removed the speaker and connected one of the coils in its place. This coil is the primary coil. There is no sound, but the pulsing current is flowing in the coil, creating a pulsing magnetic field. Next, I connected the secondary coil directly to the speaker. Still, no sound. But, when I bring the two coils together and align them, the tone sounds. Note there is a space between the two coils. The coils are not touching. We are witnessing inductance. The pulsing current in the primary coil produces a pulsing magnetic field that induces current flow in the second coil, creating sound in the speaker. Experimenting with the overlap of the two coils, we can find a location where the tone stops a null or balanced position. This is Bell's induction balance. Bring a piece of metal close to the coils and the circuit loses balance, becoming unstable and causing a tone in the speaker. Metal has been detected. This is the design of metal detector created by Bell. The genius in this design is his method of using an electromechanical device, the interrupter, to create an oscillating current flow. If you're interested in learning about electromagnetic devices like this, visit our website at hyloroad.com bell for a link to the instructional video, Build an Electric Buzzer. If you attempt to build a metal detector like Bell's, you will probably find it is very temperamental, difficult to tune and stabilize. You may want to experiment with different coil sizes and windings. Bell wound his coils on wood discs and mounted them to a backing board aligned in the null position. I created a coil pair like this. Cutting discs from laminate flooring and cutting a groove around the perimeter to hold the coil windings. When the null overlap was determined, I fixed the coils to a backing board and added a handle. Similar to the device constructed by Bell. Again, this device was difficult to stabilize, certainly a long way from functioning like a modern metal detector, but it does work. There is another part to this story. You may be aware that American President Garfield was shot by an assassin, July 2nd, 1881. The medical team attending to the president called on Bell and asked if his metal detector could locate the bullet in his body. This image tells the story. This is the pair of coils being passed over Garfield's body. Bell is listening for a signal. 
This is the battery powering the device. And this single battery cell is powering the interrupter. The interrupter is located here. It made so much noise it had to be located in another room. Bell was unable to locate the bullet with his device. Frustrating considering he had successfully tested it with bullets fired into large pieces of beef. The problem was revealed sometime later. Apparently, unknown to Bell, Garfield was laying on a new style of mattress. A mattress made with coiled metal springs. Metal that interfered with Bell's device. This failure does not diminish the brilliance of Bell's innovation. Working with the equipment and knowledge of the 19th century, he was able to create something as sophisticated as a metal detector. Amazing. For links to this story and other information about Bell's metal detector, visit our website at hyloroad.com bell.